Now you also brought a Barolo today, which is made from the Nebbiolo grape. Why do you feel Barolo is a great area to grow Nebbiolo? I cannot tell you why they grow, Nebbiolo grows uh, so good and uh, so well in the area. But if you, can, if you start to drink, you see that this characteristic, uh, they grow only in, uh, in Barolo and for me in Barbaresco. Now in the past 30 years, this tradition of, of blending uh, Nebbiolo from different parts of Barolo uh, has declined in favor of, of single vineyards. We completely change uh, our way of thinking uh, of Barolo. It's true that my father was starting, uh, he started to make a, a blend between different uh, vineyards. The sto history of Cerreto was this, he broke up mm, with my grandfather Riccardo, he decided to make his own Cerreto style because we, mm, we didn't own any vineyards. He started to vinify what were the best uh, uh, crews or single vineyards, uh, how you want to call, in the Barolo. Uh, to understand what to buy. He also understood that there was so many big difference because of the exposure, because of the altitude, because of the soil, that probably they were um, good enough to subline and to start to make uh, single vineyards. The Barolo that you brought today is the from the Prapo vineyard in Seralunga. And Seralunga is known for wines that age a long time long with, with plenty of structure. How does that differ from other areas in Barolo? It's the soil, it's the climate, it's the altitude. If you have to consider that Prapo, it's always picked at least 10 days after La Mora. So it's, um, it's a completely different terroir in uh, 10 kilometers of dif distance. Right now, what we're gonna drink, it's a Seralunga wine. Being higher, lev uh, higher altitude makes you, I can say, not easier, but better wines because you can leave the grapes a bit more to ripe, where in uh, vineyards facing south or more uh, or warmer com compared to Saralunga, you cannot wait and you have to pick because if not you will make a jam or a really, really high, high alcohol wine. For me this is a very typical Brolo because I love the expression of, of the cherry fruit, of the red fruit, but then you also get uh, flavors of tar, of licorice, of some herbs or and spices, you know, maybe even a, a, a little tobacco. Alessandro, what's your favorite part of making Barolo? Making Barolo is an, is an art, but the artist is the climate and the terroir. So what I have to do is to respect the terroir because I cannot change the climate. So I'm learning a lot because before I was starting my uh, harvest, knowing already my target. Today is completely changed. If you talk about Arnais, it's more um, a wine that I know what I expect from this wine, so I'm trying to uh, reach it every year. In the Barolo, I'm not, I'm not because a uh, vintage could be thinner, another one could be fatter, one is tannic and one is not. Before I was trying to correct it, um, a sort of surgery. The winemaker passes, the terroir remains. And this is the, uh, the lesson that my father said to me when he started to make wine. And only right now, after 10, 15 vintages, I, I understood it.